Welcome to another video. We have a limit problem that's actually a problem because my children tried to find this limit, but they failed. They claimed it was too difficult for them. And then they suggested that the answer might be negative infinity. And at that also, they were not correct. The limit of this function does not exist as x approaches zero. And you can take a look at the graph. This is what it looks like. As you can see, the limit from the left-hand side is not the same thing as the limit from the right-hand side. So at zero, the limit just does not exist. Now, assuming we don't know what the graph looks like, how would you show that algebraically? Let's get into the video. In order to understand this fully, you have to understand how cosine and cotangent and sine behave. So looking at this, as x approaches zero, what's happening to cosine? If you imagine the, the, the value of cosine of anything close to zero, it's approaching one. Look at the graph of cosine. Cosine looks like this. Let's say this is the point one. From the left, this is what's going on. As you can see, whether we're approaching zero from the left when the values of x are negative, or approaching zero from the right when the values of x are positive, what you're getting is the value of cosine is positive. Right? So whether it is negative x or positive x, cosine retains the same value for both positive and negative values at the same distance from zero. You get the same output on top, but in the bottom, it is either negative or positive, and that's the main problem. So, how do we do this? We don't really know how the graph of cotangent would behave when you have an argument of one minus cosine, so we might as well just say, let's write the algebra, okay? So we might say that this is equal to the limit as x goes to zero of, see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say this is, remember cotangent is cosine over sine. So it's gonna be cosine of one minus cosine x divided by, well, this x is still here. So I'm gonna write it as x times the sine of one minus cosine x. Don't be confused, cotangent theta is cosine theta over sine theta. But in this case, my theta is this argument, one minus cosine x. So I have written this this way. Can I take the limit now? Yeah, just follow me and see what I'm gonna do. This is equal to, as x goes to zero, cosine, this is gonna become, if we evaluate the limit at this point, this becomes one, because cosine zero will be one. One minus one is, zero, cosine zero will be one. So this is equal to one divided by, the same thing is gonna happen, but this is gonna become one minus one, which is equal to zero. So sine zero is zero. What is zero times zero? It is zero. And that's where we are. So what is this limit? Is this infinity or is it undefined? Because this is what I've heard students say that when it is one over zero, it means the limit does not exist or the limit is infinity or the limit is negative infinity. Whenever you get one over zero, do not make a conclusion. You have to transition to one-sided limits. Every time you get this, go to one-sided limits. See if the limit from the left is the same as the limit from the right. If they are the same, the limit exists. Okay, if they're not the same, then the limit does not exist. That's what you must do every time you get a problem like this. So, let's see. Look, look at this limit. The limit as x goes to zero of one over x. And the limit as x goes to zero of one over x squared. You see, this limit does not exist, but this limit exists. 
This limit is infinity. This limit does not exist. And the only reason is that the, the two-sided limits we take of this are not the same. But when you take the two-sided limits of this, they are the same. And that's what you have to do here to decide whether the limit exists or not. Okay, so we now investigate two-sided limits. Okay, these are the next steps you have to take to show that this limit does not exist. You have to find the limit as x approaches zero from the left and as x approaches zero from the right. So if we're approaching from the left, this is what happens. The value here of cosine, whether it's from the left, remember I explained whether it's from the left or from the right, you still get the same values. And at zero, you're gonna end up with one on top. This is gonna be equal to one, okay? When you get here, you're still gonna do the same thing. You're gonna approach, this is gonna give you zero. This is gonna be zero and this will be sine zero. But you see the value of x here, because it's approaching zero from the left, it's a negative number. So this number is approaching zero from the left. That's actually what we wrote here. This is zero, this is zero from the left, this is one. Okay, so one, over a slightly negative number is going to be negative infinity. And the opposite is going to be the case here. So we're going to have the same case of 1 over 0, but this 0 is from the right. And remember, a limit only exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. So does this exist? No. So that's how you conclude. If both of them were negative infinities, your answer will be negative infinity. Okay? If they were both positive infinity, you get positive infinity. So we say the limit as x goes to zero um, of um, cotangent of one minus cosine x over x does not exist since the left side limit is not equal to the right side limit. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.